I say this every year, but this year's running shoes have been pretty darn special. Well, most of them that is. Today I welcome you guys to the most prestigious running shoe award ceremony you will find here on YouTube. What is up guys, Andy Forestine Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today is not just any old video, it's the Running Shoe Awards 2022. So the Running Shoe Awards is back for its fourth year now in a row. Delighted to be bringing this one back. And quite frankly, this is my most favorite video that I get to make all year because I get to showcase all the running shoes that I've managed to test this year, categorize them and give them these incredible awards that are so prestigious, it's unbelievable. And of course, at the end, we'll be talking about my favorite shoe of the year. And as we go through this, guys, if you want to categorize your own shoes that you've been lucky enough to test this year, make sure you drop your Running Shoe Awards down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your standout shoes have been for certain areas of your running or if you've just got one that's been a real shining star. Let everyone know, drop it down there and we'll all share our thoughts on it. So without further ado we're going to be diving into the first category today which is of course the long run category. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and let's dive in. So let's dive right into this then, shall we? There will be four shoes per category, two honourable mentions, a runner-up and a winner. And the honourable mention for this category of the long-run shoe of the year go to the Zoom Fly 5 from Nike and the Pro 3 from Adidas, namely because the Zoom Fly 5 has become a staple in my long-run workout, especially during marathon training. It was brilliant. I used it so much. I know it divides opinion. It just works really well for me, and I feel like it deserves to be there. The Pro 3 might have pushed up the ranks a bit more, but I just haven't had it long enough uh, to do that much testing. I think I've had it like a month or two so it's put some great long runs in it but it's not quite made that much of an impression on me just yet although it's been such a fantastic addition to my lineup therefore we have a runner-up and a winner here between the Asics Nova Blast 3 and the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and the runner-up of this category goes to the Pro 3 meaning the winner of the long run shoe of the year is the Nova Blast 3. I hear you say why if you'd have seen my long run my most used long run shoe of the year video last week or the week before you'd have known that the Brooks Hyperion Tempo won it because I used it the most and I love that shoe but it's not a 2022 release so that has to be written off and I've got to say in terms of my favorite most enjoyable long run ride out there it's got to go to this shoe. I feel like the updates that they've made from the Nova Blast 1 and 2 have lended itself to becoming a really good snappy long run short. I've even kind of moved away from using this for easy runs and I now just use it for sort of moderate runs and I use it for more maybe marathon pace long runs or long runs where I just want to pick up the pace a bit. This is the shoe that I really, really love using. I've got to say the Pro 3, I used it last weekend. It just reminded me how good it was and this is a massive confidence boosting shoe when I was marathon training. But if I'm looking for something non-plated, which I try and do a lot of my long runs in non-plated shoes I've got to say this is the one I've reached for it's been the most enjoyable the most comfortable and is a worthy winner of this category and let's move swiftly on to the speed day shoe of 2022 the shoe that I have loved to do interval work in the shoe that I would classify sort of let's say vo2 max style intervals really fast work down to sort of like three four minute efforts that range that shorter sharper fast turnover kind of pick up the pace work these are the shoes that I've really enjoyed doing some work in some honorable mentions go out to the Nova Blast 3 and of course the Under Armour I've got to get this right Velocity Flow Wind what a shoe that is that has been a great shoe for me I haven't put the most amount of miles in it but it's been a real surprise when it came into my lineup but the runner-up and the winner of these goes to the Zoom Fly 5 and the Streak Fly and I think you guys know which one's going to win so the runner-up this year is the Zoom Fly 5 I have used this on a multitude of occasions in terms of across the board the long run workouts it absolutely annihilates and I loved it I used it during marathon training for a lot of marathon pace stuff and I did actually use it on quite a lot of my double threshold days in the shorter sharper work and I found it to be really really good as well but I think naturally, as you can understand, I'm looking for something lightweight, something snappy, and the Streak Fly comes in hands down. If you saw my Speed Day Shoe of the Year most used video last week, last week for sure, you'll know that this absolutely outrun the majority of the shoes there by over double. I've used this so much this year, and it just wins hands down. I'm gonna be honest with you, by a landslide in this category. So the Streak Fly is a brilliant winner for the Speed Day Shoes.
and we move on to the easy day shoe of the year category a category which i really enjoyed because last year i didn't test enough easy day shoes if i'm honest and this year i've got a really good selection to choose from and the runners up of this category are the puma velocity nitro 2 and the uh, new balance 880 version 12 if i could category if i could order those it would be the puma in third place and the new balance in fourth i think the new balance was an interesting one it was quite a heavy shoe but it's one I gravitated towards. I really, really enjoyed it. The Puma gave me a lot of joy. I loved that shoe. It was brilliant, and I really couldn't recommend it highly enough. It's on some incredible discounts at the moment, and if you can grab a pair, it's a great easy day trainer. But I've got to be honest with you, Saucony have run away with it this year in terms of this category. I've got the Ride 15, and I've got the Shift 3 here. Now, the Shift 3 is more of a recent addition. Again, a heavier shoe, but something I'm finding myself gravitating towards every single easy run. And the Ride 15 was so good that I ended up retiring it to use as my daily walking shoe uh, because I've just found it so comfortable. So with that in mind, let's give the runner-up of this category to the Shift 3 because I feel like a, I haven't had it quite as long as the Ride 15. It hasn't quite made as much impression, but I do feel the bulk on it does just notch a few points off it. Not massively, but I feel like if it was just a tiny bit sleeker, a tiny bit lighter, it could be an absolute shoe of the year contender. Really shocked me, especially after the first run when I found the midsole so, so firm, but it's really bedded in nicely. And I've got about 60 miles in it now, and it's going so strong. Loving this shoe. But the Ride 15 has been a revelation for me this year. When I used it, I found this to be a great easy day and moderate day shoe. So it had a bit more of a span in terms of where I could use it. I did find I preferred it on the easy days, but it could easily pick up the pace because it was much lighter weight. Lower stack, but the cushion in this shoe just me meant it was sitting nicely between super, super soft and a bit too firm and it was just that perfect sweet spot for me. As I said, so much so that I got to a point where I wanted to retire it and use it for my daily use, and right now I'm still using it in my daily use. So I put over 100 miles in the shoe, and now I'm using it every single day, and it has got to be right up there for a shoe of the year contender. And now we move on to trail shoe of the year, an interesting category and take this one with a little bit of a pinch of salt because I haven't really done too many miles in these shoes. Now normally what happens in this category in previous years, I don't have that many shoes to showcase, but I do have four this year, uh, one of which hasn't even made it onto a video on the channel this year and I'll explain why now. The honourable mentions or the runners up are the Innovate Trailfly G270 and the Pegasus Trail 3 Gore-Tex. Now, I think the Trail 3 Gore-Tex, although I received it this year for testing, I think it was maybe released last year, I'm not sure. So really, I'm throwing it in there because it bulks out uh, this section, but I tested it this year. And the Innovate didn't make it onto the channel because I actually tested this shoe last year, but it had just been renamed. Innovate kindly sent me this shoe for the purpose of testing. I heard that this was the Trailfly G270. Didn't have that because I had the Terra Ultra G270. Did some investigation, thought this looks very familiar. I'm sure I've tested this already and realized that they just did a name change. So again, I've used the shoe once uh, and it's a great shoe, but I can't really give it too much ranking there because I tested it last year. So these guys are in there for a bit of an honorable mention, but the tr two shoes that I want to really shout about uh, is the Terra Kyger, I think it's the Terra Kyger 8 that way, and the Pegasus Trail for Gore-Tex. Now the runner up is gonna be the Terra Kyger 8, but I'm gonna hands down say straight away, if I could have put more runs in this shoe, I'm pretty confident this would be the winner because I got this straight out of the box and it was just a delight to run in. I've only put just under five miles in it. It's only had one run, but I've got to say, if I could put more runs in it, I think this would win simply because it felt so good. I just don't feel I can judge a shoe based on one run. And as I've gravitated towards this shoe out of every single sort of trail adventure run that I've done this year, and I put four or five runs in it, then it's going to be the Pegasus 4 Go uh, Trail 4 Gore-Tex. A fantastic update from three. Lost a shed load of weight. Super comfy. Size half a size up in this shoe. I did find it a little bit tight in the fitting. But overall, the mid midsole feels a bit softer. It's a bit more of a cushion ride. Grip with the Nike shoes wasn't great, but that's the only downside I can say about this shoe. And for me, I've got to be honest with you, uh, when I've gone to the shed to grab a trail shoe out there, this has been the one that I've picked for every, every time. So I've got to say that this is the winner of this category. <laughs> Thank you.
Let's move on to a really exciting category, the racing shoe of 2022. Now I did do my thoughts on this not too long ago and these four shoes are indeed the same four shoes that you will have seen in there but I have come to a slightly different conclusion where I now have a winner because if you guys remember I had a joint winner in that video. So some honorable mentions go to let's visualize this is the Outfly version 2. I know it's the version 1 but I sent my version 2 back because I didn't really enjoy it. So let's pretend that's the version 2. We've got the Street Fly there an honorable mention because although it's designed to be a racing shoe I just don't use it for racing. The Vaporfly and the Alpha Flight are much better for racing, but it is a racing shoe, so it's there. And I've got to say, I love it. You guys know I've shouted about it so much. So the runner-ups and the winner are again indeed the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 3. Now, what I've come to the conclusion of is that I'm going to give this thing the runner-up spot and I'm going to give this thing the win. Simply because I've done a couple more runs in this shoe, a couple more runs in this shoe since that video, just to kind of come to some conclusions. And I have to say, I'm still loving how poppy and snappy this thing is after like 140, 150 miles. And I, th I think to myself, if I was to go out and race a 5k, a 10k, a half marathon. Right now, I would probably slip on this shoe over this one. Having said that, that's not taking anything away from the Adidas. I do find this to be an incredible long run cruiser. I did do a recent race in it. I find it works so well for my gait cycle, but the sizing on this shoe still is still leaving me with a few problems. I'm still finding the ends of my toes are blistering slightly. Even though I've half sized up, I do find sizing in Adidas very peculiar and I've got to kind of get to the bottom of that because if I go to up to a UK 14, I've got to say I think it could be a little bit too big and a little bit too baggy. So whether I get a shoe stretcher in there and just stretch it out a little bit, I don't know. But overall, I have to say if the sizing was a bit better and I wasn't getting those issues, it might be a bit closer. But I've got to say in terms of like the fit, the comfort and what I'm gravitating towards, the Saucony Dolphin Pro 3 not only is like the best improvement from the previous version, but I've got to say, it's been the most comfortable racer of the year. And let's move on to the flop of the year, the shoe that I really haven't got on with, or the shoe that I just feel hasn't been quite right, hasn't hit the mark, and it's going to be the Nike Pegasus Next, uh, Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Percent Nature. I'll get it right in a minute. These shoe names are just ridiculous. Just call it a name. It's anyway, this shoe sadly for me was a little bit of a mismatch shoe. It's not particularly a bad shoe, but I feel like it was mis. Um, it was mismarketed. It wasn't marketed very well. And I think we all got quite excited from when we saw that there was a new Turbo shoe coming out. It's massively heavier than the previous versions. The Turbo 2 was one of my favorite shoes ever. I never tried the Turbo 1, but the 2 was fantastic. And I've got to say, this shoe is everything that the Turbos were not. Although it looks relatively similar and the silhouette looks quite similar, it's just not that much of an exciting ride. I tried to do a speed workout in it like I used to do all my speed workouts in the Turbo. It was just terrible. It's an easy day shoe at best, I think, but more like a fashion shoe. And I've got to say as well, this upper is crazy because I've not had this in any shoe this year, but I get a lot of pain if I'm running or walking in this shoe for more than half an hour around the outside because my feet are quite wide. Uh, and this material is not forgiving at all and it was just causing too much pressure on the outside of my foot. So not particularly for everyone and I think a lot of people agree. My statement and the, the thing around this shoe and what Nike are doing, I'm going to leave it at this. If you see anything with recycled Zoomex in or if you see anything uh, talking about this stuff in here, it's held together by glue, it's going to be heavier. The Zoom Fly 5 is a classic example we got so excited and despite it being a great shoe that i enjoyed the zoom uh, the zoom x in that again is recycled it's going to be held together by glue it's just going to add weight to it that shoe was also encased in a carrier foam this also has a carrier foam similar around the outside there and going up the back here just to encase everything so that the zoom x doesn't kind of crumble and go everywhere and i've got to say you know that if you're going to get a recycled zoom x shoe it's going to be a lot heavier than the other so we'll leave it at that this sadly is flop of the year. So on to some honorable mentions before we move on to the main category winner and that is simply going to be some shoes that I've really really loved that I haven't quite won the awards but I feel deserve a little bit more credit. First things first I just want to say Brooks Hyperion Tempo obviously they're not featured in this at all but I've used them so much this year once again a quality shoe really looking forward to the Hyperion Max next year and just I think it's called just the Tempo as well uh, the updated version of this it's going to be fingers crossed 
a really good shoe. So I want to give that one a shout out. And the Outfly version one, despite the fact that this is a previous year's iteration, I actually got it this year for testing. Um, so although I don't particularly want to include it in, a little bit like the Peg Trail 3 Gore-Tex, I got it this year. I think it was released last year. I've got to say, this was one of my racing shoes of the year. Like it was my go-to for a long period of time. It still probably is my favorite racing shoe of all time at the moment. It's just such, such a great shoe and can currently be found in Nike outlet stores for 90 pounds. I got sent a photo from someone the other day on Instagram saying, look, it's for 90 quid in the Swindon designer outlet. Couldn't believe it, that's crazy. Uh, so thanks to Chez for that one for the heads up. So they're out there and you cannot, you just can't beat it for value. But these two shoes I wanna give an honorable mention, the Shift 3 and the Under Armour shoe. Now the Shift 3, again, I just wish I had a bit more time testing it, but I'm really surprised at this shoe. This really is a case of this versus the 880 version 12, both on the heavier end of the spectrum, but both shoes I ended up gravitating towards for those easier runs. But I feel this absolutely strips the 880 uh, down. It's much, much better. Um, I feel like the foam has really lively, um, has become a lot more lively. It's super comfy, super cushioned. I can really work on my cadence in it. And it's been an absolute stalwart of my recent running shoe rotation. And the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind, what a shoe. I, again, it didn't win any categories, but when I got it, I received it, I was sent to it. I was sent it by Mike, a subscriber, who very kindly wanted me to test it out. So I, I, I obliged and I did, and I was very grateful to Mike. And I put about 50 miles in the shoe, and I've got to say, it made me want to try more Under Armour running shoes. On the firmer side, uh, but I love the lightweight nature of it. Again, I would recommend half sizing up, but the lightweight nature of the shoe really lent itself uh, to some really nice faster days. I did quite a fair few fast runs in it and I found the comfort really good. That combined with how light it was, but the cushioning you get around the back there, you can see how thick that is. It's just brilliant. Just like everything about this shoe was really, really good. So a massive thumbs up to Ar Under Armour there for this one. And on to the running shoe of the year 2022. This is the shoe that I have absolutely loved, loved, loved running it more than anything. And sometimes it doesn't just come down to the volume of runs, the number of miles, whatever it is, because that just might be because we have that shoe in our rotation and we need to use it up. It's the shoe that's brought me the most joy, the shoe that has been the most fun, and a shoe that's really took me by surprise, a shoe that has just absolutely wowed me and I've just wanted to wear it all the time. And basically these four shoes here are the category winners uh, from the Easy Day, this speed day, the long run and the racing shoe. Honorable mentions go to the Ride 15 and the Pro 3, <clears throat> both fantastic shoes. I love them so, so much, but it ultimately comes down to the Nova Blast 3 and the Streak Fly. And I have to say, I'm going to surprise myself a little bit here, but I'm going to give the runner up spot to the Nova Blast 3 and I'm going to give the win here to the Streak Fly. Surprisingly, because the Nova Blast 1 and 2 has been my running shoe of the year uh, for 2019, uh, 2020 and 2021. And I've got to say, this has been such a tight matchup between this and the Street Fly. I've loved everything they've done with this shoe. I've loved all of the updates and I can't fault it whatsoever. The only reason I'm giving it to the Street Fly is because it is a shoe that gave me the wow factor that I was looking for and what this category is all about. It came onto the market as this racing shoe that's going to replace the Vaporfly. It's going to do 5 and 10 Ks. I got the shoe and straight away I went, Nah, it's not going to do that at all. It's not going to beat the Vaporfly, and I wouldn't. I'd choose the Alpha Fly over it as well. But the second I took it for that first run, rather than me just saying, nah, I don't think it's, I just went, all right, it's not a racing shoe, but my word, this is one hell of a lightweight, poppy, speed day shoe and the stats showed it in my speed day shoe of the year the other week 32 runs in this shoe absolutely outnumbered all of the other speed day shoes by such a long way i've gone through two pairs of these first pair i bought with my own money this pair right here were gifted to me by nike and i cannot fault them in the slightest they gave me the wow factor they gave me the enjoyment i'm still using them right now to this day first pair got over 200 miles in them these now have over 100 miles in them I don't just want to continue using them every single run. I've got to say every speed session, I'm going streak fly. There's nothing more to it. This gave me the wow factor. This gave me everything I wanted. And for me, it fully deserves to knock the Nova Blast off its top spot and take shoe of the year. So some final thoughts on this year's Running Shoe Awards 2022. And again, I just appreciate you guys sticking around for the year for testing all these shoes. I really do appreciate it. My thoughts are kind of really, I'd love to test a few more speed 
speed day shoes next year. That's been a category that I've really lacked this year. Although the street fly has completely run away with it uh, for me, I have lacked in testing that sort of lower stack, more lighter, nimble type shoe. I had last year, I think I had the Liberate Nitro. I had the Rebel V3. Um, I had other shoes like that. Oh, the Skechers Razor Excess. Shoes that just were really, really good for these VO2 Max workouts. I just haven't tested enough of those this year. So I'd love to make sure that I test a little bit more of those next year and really some more racing shoes. I'd love to test some more racing shoes. I'm hoping in 2023 some more brands open up to a UK size 30 and I say it every year. I keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully that will happen. But that's it for this year's Running Shoe Awards. If you've been following along till now, as I said at the beginning, make sure you drop your awards down in the comments below. Whether you can fill all the categories, a few categories, or just one running shoe, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And once again, thanks again for sticking around right to the end of this video. And of course, throughout the year, whilst I've been testing all of these shoes, I appreciate your support, guys. It means a lot to me. So that's it for this year's video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always I'll see you in the next one until then